Good morning, Fusion Madison. Pastor Joshua coming here with you for a few announcements. First off, ISM students, it is time to sign up for REACH. REACH conference is right around the corner and we need to get your sign up in. If you're not signed up yet, please see Whitney ASAP today. All right, starting next week, we're excited. We've been announcing it for a while. We're moving to three services, 8.30 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11.30 a.m. Pick one of those services. They're all made with you in mind. On the Saturday the 14th, our women's group have a meeting here at the church on the 14th. We want you to, to come and be a part of sharing a recipe that you are going to make. So make the recipe, make your, di your dish, and then also bring a copy of the recipe to share with all the other ladies. Um, Season Saints, that will be the following Wednesday. We want to have you get involved um, in any way, shape, or form with uh, just getting to get to know one another. Um, if you are uh, of a seasoned generation, we'd love to see you there. Um, it'll be right here at the church downstairs in the uh, kids' ministry area. We'll have some tables set up. And if you need some more information on that, please see Eric and Margie Moore. Lastly, on Sunday the 22nd, we are going to have a baby dedication. If you are interested in getting your baby dedicated and prayed over here at the church, we need you to sign up. The sign up for that is located here in the lobby, right on the table. Um, please do that today. If you have any questions, you can see uh, Pastor Kate or uh, Whitney and they can get you the right, the right information with the right hands. Thank you everybody and um, we're really glad you're here with us. Please join us, stand with us this morning and let's begin to praise Jesus. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing today? Right? Blessed. Well, if you don't know, I'm Pastor Kate. I'm the assistant pastor here at Fusion Church Madison. Um, counted a privilege to be with you guys this morning and be able to share God's word with you. Um, I don't know about you guys, but truly blessed to have Pastor Aaron and his family with us. Uh, just an amazing family. We are blessed by them. Um, if you haven't said anything to them, shake their hand, tell them thanks for what they do. So, want to make a couple of announcements before we dig in this morning, if I can. A um, couple of few big announcements. First one, easiest way to follow us is follow us on Facebook. If you don't already, look us up, check us out. Um, next announcement. So I need crowd participation for this one, okay? Everybody say, next week. <laughs> Next week, all right, next week we go to three services, okay? 8.30, 10, and 11.30. We're excited as a staff to provide opportunity for people to fill in the seats, fill in the parking lot, um, and just spread out over three services. So help us out, either come to middle or end service, whichever one works best for you and your family, come hang out with us. And if you're interested at all in helping us out with, we need help across the board to go to three services with security, sign-in, check-in, um, just so many different ministries. If you're interested in helping out, we're asking like once a month, see myself or <laughs> see Whitney. 
Um, Whitney's on the front row, so you can see me after service. Um, so we have a new ministry starting. I believe it's September 16th is their first one. Uh, they're called Five Loaves. And what that is, it's a community meal that they're going to meet here at the church, open the doors, and provide a meal for the community. If you are interested in helping in that ministry, you can see Shannon Emery or Kathy Kylie. They'd be happy to talk with you. Okay, next, everybody say September 22nd. <laughs> Come on, church, a little louder. <laughs> All right. We have baby dedication. If you've not had your child dedicated and would like to get, get them dedicated, sign up out on the coffee bar just so we know how many we're having and what service you want and all that with us going to three services. In my last announcement, does anybody have a program? The little thing that has printed material of what's going on for the next week. Okay, so all of you, on your way out, pick up a program so you know what's going on. So you can't say that you forgot or missed it. Okay, I don't know about you, but that is enough announcements. Let's get into what we came here today. If I can just pray and we'll get going. Father God, I just thank you for all of us here today. I pray, Lord, that you would remove me and just work through me, God. I pray, God, that you would open our ears and our hearts for your word today. Be glorified for we ask this in your name. Amen. So I hope you've been enjoying the series, Scripture Behind the Sign. Um, I've enjoyed it. It's been fun and, and interesting seeing different verses pulled out and maybe a verse that I was told by a grandparent or a parent and getting to see how it is actually supposed to be used in context. Um, you know, I think sometimes we can become so familiar with the Bible that when we read it, we kind of see the words on the page and our mind just fills in the blank. Um, sometimes we can kind of graze over it and not realize what God has for us or what he's trying to teach us in this story. Sometimes familiarity can breed laziness. And so many of our misunderstandings in Scripture can happen because of that, because we're too familiar with the passage that we need to look at it with fresh eyes. So if we would come to God's Word with fresh eyes more often, and I'm just as guilty of it, we'd realize that some of the most common interpretations of Scripture passed down to us, don't make much sense when viewed in the context of the passage. Just like Pastor Aaron has pointed out, Philippians 4.13, you know, um, today we're going to talk about Jeremiah 29.11. It's a very well-known verse that, you know, a lot of times you hear if you're going through a difficult time, somebody will throw that verse out to you. Or if you've just graduated, you'll see it on a graduation card or, um, you know, anything like that. And if we think about it or we're even honest, I haven't been a Christian all my life, but I can tell you I heard that verse before I came, became a Christian. Um, so I want to read it again today. I know you watched it on the video, but Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So as a standalone promise, it appears that God is going to make us popular, rich, and healthy, right? In that standalone scripture, that's what pops out. The American dream, right? Be rich, healthy, have it all together. So if we were honest in here, if anybody was honest in here, they would say that it'd be nice not to stress about health or money, right? 
or maybe it's just me that have had those conversations. Like, um, I'm sure all of us, if we would admit it, have been there. So I want to take a look at Jeremiah 29 11, but I want to put it in the context. So I want to look at it from 10, verse 10 to 14. And it says, the Lord, this is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So this verse quoted to countless individuals who would be struggling with maybe vocation or what God's will is for their life. It's not written to individuals at all, if you study the text. It's actually written to an entire group of people, an entire nation. So for those of you that are they like grammar, and I am not one. Um, English was never my strong suit, although my son likes to correct me every time I use a word incorrectly or I say, like, hey, let's get in the car, and I'm actually referring to the truck. He's like, mom, it's the truck. I'm like, whatever. Like, get in the vehicle. Let's go. Like, so for those of you that are into grammar, the you in verse 11 isn't singular. It's actually plural. And we don't have to be a scholar to realize that if I give you one of something or I give you a hundred of something, it's a big difference, right? So let's look at verse 29, 10. This verse kind of pops out, and it's, it's a little scary if you think about it. Like, so the Lord says when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. So God lays down specifics on the promise that he will fulfill. But not without telling them that it's going to take 70 years. I don't know about you all, but I had grandparents that only lived to like 72. Like, I lost grandparents at a very young age. Um, so, I mean, when you look at 70 years, and I'm... 41 now. Um, <laughs> it's really crazy to think about. Like, it's kind of scary. So God says, I will redeem you after 70 years in exile. That is far from, far, far from a cry of the expectation that God has the plans all in order. At least maybe you guys are way more patient than I am. But we're talking like 70 years, y'all. Like he tells them, I've got your future. I've got everything in order. But it's going to be 70 years before I bring you there. Okay. So I don't know about you, but I'm sure the Israelites 
never expected it to take that long. They never had plans for their plan to get out of exile to take 70 years. Some of them maybe never even seen the end of it. So if we take verse 2911 and look at it, you could be sitting there and saying, when the verse is taken out of context, it still offers value, right? Like, it's a good verse. So the answer to that question is yes and no. We need to let the Bible speak to us and not allow our own personal bent to speak into the scriptures. If Jeremiah 29 is speaking to the nation of Israel and not just one person, then we should start with the truth in the scriptures. Context matters, doesn't it? Not only in what we read, but in a story that your kid's telling you that something happened. What happened matters. Everything. Not just, she hit me, so I hit her back. So, God speaks to us at a particular moment in time. He's speaking to a particular group for a reason. In the context, this incredible promise is not given to an individual, but to a whole group of people like we discussed. It was given to the people exiled in Babylon. God promised that he had not given up on his people and that even though things looked dire, they still had a future and a hope. So I'm sure if you look back on your life and reflected a little bit, you could probably relate to this story that there's been times in your life that you've been in dire moments. Or you've been in moments that you didn't know where God's plan was going. Can anybody relate to that today? Right. So there's a time in my life that I was in my early 20s. And... As we've mentioned before, Pastor Aaron and Pastor Tara and I have been friends for over half my life now. Like, it's been a while. So when we would hang out, we would talk about things and what we wanted to see in life and what we were going to do. And I would mention things like I didn't understand why I didn't have who I was going to marry. And at this point, y'all, I didn't have anybody even in the picture, right? So I would make comments like, if I'm not married by the time I'm 30, I'm just going to be single the rest of my life. Like, whatever. <laughs> of course, Pastor Aaron and Tara would, you know, respond back to me, but, and remind me that I was being just a tad dramatic, as a good friend should, right? So... At this point, I realize, I realize now, looking back, as I was writing my sermon, talking to my husband, I was like, huh, so that's where my kids get the drama attitude. <laughs> like, just at times. Not that I'm that way all the time, but just sometimes. So, let's fast forward just a touch, okay? So I was in my early 20s, now I'm like 26-ish, I think, is what we figured out. So, at this point, I'm working third shift at a balloon factory over in Ashland, pulling tons of 12-hour days. Because what else are you going to do? I'm not dating anybody or anything, so I might as well just make money. I mean, right? So, I'm working, I'm living at my mom's house, my stepdad's house. And as I'm out, like, running out the door, my stepdad stops me and he's like, Hey! I was like, okay. Turned around, and he's like, hey, this is Jimmy. I was like, okay, hi, bye, like, and ran out the door. So on my drive to work, I'm like, that was kind of a nice-looking guy. Like, 
wonder a little more about this gentleman. Like, what's his story? All that stuff. So, I can't tell you exactly how long it was from that point that we first met to the point that I asked him as he was working on my stepdad's place if he wanted to go hang out sometime. That's right, I asked first. (laughs) I'm just saying, I was the first one. (laughs) So he said yes, we went out. Uh, I don't know, maybe a Mexican restaurant first, I don't know. Uh, It's been too long ago, (laughs) y'all. Give me a break. Um, So we went, we hung out, we hung out. Now, mind you, we'd only hung out for like a short time and been dating for a very short time. And all of a sudden, this gift shows up at my mom's house. I'm like, what in the world? Like, so I open the gift, and it's a homemade candle. And I'm like, okay. Like, now, mind you, the fact that I left out of the story until now is Jimmy had a daughter who I had never met at this point. And there were so many people telling me that this little girl was going to hate my guts because she is a daddy's girl and she doesn't want anybody interfering. I'm like, okay. Like, starting out with a great opportunity. Awesome. Like, you know, I, I like to say I'm a likable person, easy to get along with, but most of the time. And so... <laughs> Come on, Mike, most of the time. So, you know, at that point, I got a little freaked out. Because like I said, it had only been a short while and I'd never met this little girl. So at that point, I ghosted him for like a year, probably at least a year. Um, Went on about business and like still in the back of my head, still wondered what would happen if things would have worked out. So I got in a car accident, had to get a new car. And at this point, I'm thinking, like, it'd be nice to kind of go out with Jimmy again. And, but how do you ask somebody to go back out after you ghost them for a year, right? So I'm like, so me, I'm just like, hey, I got a new car. You want to come look at it? And... (laughs) Now, mind you, I am not a car buff at all. If anybody knows me, like, I could care less what I'm driving. As long as it drives from A to B, I'm good to go. Like, so as we're standing around this new car looking at it, and I'm acting like I actually care about the vehicle, um, I'm like, hey, you want to go hang out sometime? I'm like, he's like, yeah, sure. I'm like, wait. What did you say? (laughs) He's like, yeah, sure. So then we went and hung out, and we've been together ever since. But I say all that because then it was probably a couple years after we had been married. We were just talking at the house, and he's like, hey, so did I ever tell you that God showed me the woman that I was going to marry would leave and then come back? I was like... No, like, not at all, (laughs) which is wise on his part because, like we said before, I ghosted him over a candle. So if he tells me that I'm going to, like, leave and then come back, do you, yeah, probably would have freaked me out just a touch. So um, he shared that information with me, and then it, it all made sense, like it all clicked. That God really does have the plans for my life in order, even though I couldn't see it. But I'm sure none of you can relate to that at all. (laughs) So, So we can all agree in here, I'm sure, at this point, that we might not see the whole picture, but God does have our futures all taken care of if we're obedient to follow him, right? Like, I can provide you everything, but if you don't come and receive it, it does no good. 
So Jeremiah 29, 11, again, says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So the word prosper really jumped out to me. And I looked it up in the dictionary, because again, like we just discussed, I am not an English buff. Like, English, not my strong suit. So, I looked it up, and the word prosper in the dictionary means to be successful or fortunate, especially in financial respects. To thrive. So then I looked more into the word prosper and what it meant in the scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. It doesn't refer to money or material blessing at all. It actually refers to physical and spiritual salvation. So let's put it back in the context and read it one more time. Verse 10 through 14 should be on the screen. And it says, this is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So that's a beautiful promise that God has that he's not done with his people and that their future is in line. And their hope was only found in him. The promise that he will keep his plans and see them through. And the cool part is, is people get to be a part of them his plans in the process. So I don't know about you, but my timeline doesn't always line up with God's timeline. Just like I'm sure the Israelites did not expect to be in exile for 70 years. So before I close, I want to play this video and have you watch it. So if you guys can stand with me this morning, I just want to kind of reflect and pray over you. Um, with every head bowed, every, all eyes closed, 
I just want to give the opportunity this morning that if you don't know Christ and you don't know the plans that he has for you because he has such an amazing story laid out for you if you just follow him, I want to give the opportunity for you to accept Christ. So on the count of three, if that's you, just put your hand up real quick and put it back down. All, all eyes closed, heads bowed. Again, if that's you, just put your hand up and put it back down on the count of three. One, two, three. Awesome. Here at Fusion, we like to be a family. So when one accepts Christ, we like to make them feel welcome and all of us pray it together. So if you can, repeat it after me this morning. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. And I ask for you to forgive me. Jesus, come into my life take control of my life forgive me of my sins and save me father I give you all of me so I can have all of you how awesome is that if that was you this morning and you made that prayer make sure to tell somebody that you've accepted Christ and just share that with somebody. So this morning, the altars are always open after service is over. If you have anything on topic that we talked about this morning or not, if you've just got stuff you're dealing with and you want prayer, you're always welcome to come up front. We have elders, prayer team, staff members that are willing to pray with you. I just want to pray for you and pray a blessing over you before we go this morning. So if you can bow your heads with me and close your eyes. Father, I thank you for everyone here today. God, I thank you that you created us on purpose and for a purpose. God, how amazing is it that you gifted each one of us with different gifts, unique gifts gifts to each person. God, you have intentionally placed us to live out the plans that you have for us. I pray, God, that you would just help us to use our talents and giftings for you and in the plan that you have for us. God, I pray for everyone here today that you would keep them safe as they go home. I pray, Lord, for their week, that you would just bless them, help them to have a good holiday with the family. And I pray, Lord, that you would open up doors that need opened and close the ones that need closed for us, Father. Help us to walk with you and be the example of you. For we ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you all. Have a fantastic week. Don't forget, next week, three services. We'll see you all next week.